Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Kevin, I'm the founder and owner of survivalistboards.com. It's a forum, a like mind a community of like-minded individuals that are interested in prepping and just getting your act together in case there's a riot, some type of war, outbreak of a new type of plague, just anything that could disrupt society. That's what we want to talk about. So join us at the forum. It's a lot of people that get into prepping think that it is just a matter of stockpiling your beans, stockpiling your band-aids, and stockpiling your bullets. It beans, bullets, and band-aids. There's so much more to it than that. Then you've got the people out there that are far, far, either far side of the extremes, either way out there in right field or way out there in left field, hunkered down in their bunkers, wearing the little tinfoil hats, so paranoid, so paranoid that the government is out to get them. This is not what prepping is about. This is not what survivalism is about. It's about functioning in society, living a well-balanced life and family and religion. But if there's some type of problem, earthquake, nuclear war, China gets mad at us for ending free trade, drops a couple of nukes, hey, it's all right. We've got our act together. We can hold out in our house for several months here at the farm for several years. I mean, it's, it's, life is grand. Life is great. Not only that, but we try to have your money in place, have gold and silver, financial reserves. So it's not just beans, bullets, and band-aids. You've got your, try to get your house paid for, try to live debt-free, have a good, solid family, a good relationship with God. I mean, this is the kind of things that I see that is important to the prepping community. That Back whenever I was in high school, I'm 48, so this is like 1984, 1985. Used to hang out, hang out with a guy that uh, his dad was so paranoid, so paranoid that his dad would knock a hole in the wall, talking a hole in the wall between the two by four wall studs, put a pitcher over it, or put a rifle down inside the hole in the wall, then put a pitcher over it. He was so paranoid of the government come to get him that he wouldn't hold a full-time job. He worked for himself, which there's nothing wrong with that. But he did small engine repair because he was afraid the government was tracking his income. The government was tracking him. The government was stalking him. And this is the kind of people we need to get out of the shadows and say, hey, it's okay. You don't need to live like that anymore. It's not the way it is. The government doesn't really care about you. Well, unless you're doing something illegal. That guy wasn't. He wasn't doing a small engine repair business, raising his son, following the law, but he had this mentality, just paranoia, built-in paranoia that the government was coming to get him. And that is not your typical survivalist. If you've got, if you feel that way, you really need to get some help. I mean, we really need to go talk to somebody, post in the forums, talk to a friends, and get, get some help if you feel that way. And to me, my long-term prepping plans where you've got your mylar bags that i did some videos about a couple of years ago the super pails of five gallon buckets full of oats and rice and beans and you got your fruit cheese your fruit trees you got your chickens you got your garden you got your pressure cooker pressure canner it's developing a self-sustainable lifestyle you may ask well what kevin what about somebody that doesn't doesn't have access to land somebody that's on a budget what can you do on a budget, I'm glad you asked. Is that do you do you own your home or do you live in a home with just a little bit of a backyard, a little bit of front yard? Do you have flower beds around your yard, around your house? <coughs> do you have any trees in the backyard, or room to plant dwarf trees or fig tr fig trees or depending on your zone? I mean, fig trees are great. Pear trees, rip them flowers up. You can't eat flowers. Well, some you can, but anyway. Plant you some squash, plant you some kini, plant you some spinach, plant you some carrots. Instead of planting daisies or roses, plant you some squash. In the backyard, you got some kind of little decorative tree, and I value all life, but cut that tree down and plant you a fig tree. Plant you a couple of fig trees. What about your mom and dad or your brother's house or something? Can you plant some fig trees over there? Can you plant some pear trees over there? Can you have a garden there? Is there a community beltway, a, um, a, a walkway, a, a, what are they called in the neighborhoods? A, anyway, a walkway where they go behind the house 
houses, a little wooded area. But anyway, anyway, plant you some fair pear trees out there. Plant you some peach trees. Plant you some pecan trees. Uh, gorilla gardening. There was an excellent thread on gorilla gardening in the forum a few years ago about planting uh, fruit trees and different types of trees in common areas that nobody will even notice. Stuff like that. Get type two or your public hunting lands. Where are your public hunting lands at? You take your kids fishing. You take your kids hunting. Hiking. I mean, just anything. Even just get up off the couch, go walking, go bike riding, do something physical. It's because prepping is just not stockpiling. It's a way of life. It's a way of life, people. Anyway, thanks for listening to me. I'll talk to y'all later.